Hi everybody, my name is Matt Cloudo with Ruckus Networks and I would like to welcome you back to the Ruckus ICX troubleshooting series. Today's video we're going to cover a rogue DHCP server situation. We're going to show you some ways to troubleshoot it and then ideal ways to prevent this from happening again in the future. Okay, let's get started. Right back into our trusty topology. So in this example, we have a user, which is Windows C, is reporting that they are unable to access the internet. All right, so we have the user's Windows uh, command prompt open. We've had them go ahead and do an IP config, and it's confirming what we thought. We have a 192.168.1.101 IP address, which is being given out by a rogue DHCP server. Now, this causes a lot of problems. A, it's black holing people because 192.168 is not a subnet that we're using. It's not routed. It doesn't exist anywhere. Now, if we were, this could end up causing duplicate IP addresses. It would be very tough to track down. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this and get this thing resolved for everybody. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to configure DHCP snooping. And what snooping is going to do is it's going to actually allow us to go in and trust our DHCP traffic from our known DHCP server and then any other devices that are trying to send out DHCP uh, addresses or DHCP boot PS traffic, it will go ahead and drop it. Now we're running DHCP here at our edge. All of these hosts here are DHCP enabled clients. So we're going to run DHCP through here. Now up here, this is typically a server. We'll see this in multicast videos later. So we're going to assume that that guy is a statically configured IP address and we're not running DHCP up there. So DHCP snooping does not become required. So to configure DHCP snooping, we actually have to carve some TCAM out of the devices. And to do that, we need to enable ACL purport per VLAN. Now, this has a couple of requirements. The first one being we have to turn it on. The second one being once we do turn it on, it requires a reboot. So we're going to have to go ahead and reboot everything, which means we're most likely going to have to do this in a maintenance window. So to enable this, we're just going to type enable ACL. And as you can see, it's per port per VLAN. I'll go ahead and tell us awesome. Now please write mem and reload. And we're going to do that for each subsequent device. Okay, so while these guys are rebooting, what I've done is I've turned on per port per VLAN on four devices. I've done it on the distros, and I've also done it on our IDF or access switches. And the reason you do this is because we're basically enabling DHCP option 82, and that says, hey, all of our DHCP traffic is coming from one trusted location, which you can have multiple trusted locations, but for this topology or this environment, we only have one DHCP server that we want to trust. So we're going to go ahead and say this is our trusted DHCP source, and then if we trust all of the uplinks and the interfaces throughout the, the topology, it will note that it's coming from a DHCP trusted location. All right, so I'm going to get this turned on, and I'm going to do this in distro one to begin with. So now that we've enabled ACL purport per VLAN, it's given us the ability to turn snooping on. So we're going to go ahead and snoop on each one of our VLANs that we have configured. So for this example, we're going to do a show run just to quickly look and see what VLANs we have configured. We have 237, 11, 51, and 91. So just for safety's sake, let's snoop on all of them. We want to make sure that if we're ever doing DHCP in those VLANs, we're going to go ahead and cover that. So first things first, we're going to do IP DHCP snooping trust VLAN. Oh, not trust. Snooping on VLAN. And we're going to say two. And we'll just up row through this. Three, seven, 11, 51, and 91. Now, we're going to have to do this on all of our devices. We're going to have to cover distro two, IDF one, and IDF two. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the full config in this device. So now once I've done that, I need to go in and trust the physical interfaces that I have configured on here. So I'm going to do a show FTP neighbor just to verify what interfaces I have built in here. So I know that distro two, this one right here, the top hit, this is actually going to be a lag. So I'm going to do interface lag one. And I'm going to go ahead and do DHCP snooping trust. And then I'm going to do this for interface E114. 
4, do the same thing, and then I'll do this as well on interface 115. And you know what? Just because we have a host up there, I want to make sure that we're covering it. I'm going to do this on the core as well, so we're going to cover all of our interfaces here. So I'm going to go ahead and configure this on all the devices, and then we'll show you how to do this for the host as well. All of our interfaces are now trusted, so this lag, this lag, this one. This uplink, this uplink, this uplink, and this uplink, they're all trusted in both directions. So now what we need to do is we need to actually go in and trust our DHCP server itself. So if we look in here, I know this because I built it, but this is our DHCP server interface, and we're trusting there as well. We've configured DHCP snooping trust. So now that means that we should only be obtaining IP addresses from this host. Anybody else that's trying to serve IP addresses, it won't work. They will actually get dropped, and I'm going to show you that log entry. All right, let's see if our fancy Windows box updated. So IP config, still there. So we're just going to tell the user, please do an IP config slash renew. Okay, it's not really that bad. We just need to do a release on the, on the DHCP lease first. So we'll go ahead and release it. All right, now we're going to do an IP config renew. And there we go. Just like that, we've got the right IP address. All right, that's it for this one. So remember, outside of being on the floor where you believe that the rogue device is plugged in or having somebody you can call that can walk around and look for it, you know, Wireshark can help you, but it becomes really difficult to troubleshoot remotely. Now, using... DHCP snooping can absolutely prevent this from happening ever. So I want to thank you for joining us. That concludes today's video. Remember, hit subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell and get notified about new videos. See you next time.